Hi there guys, uh, this video is a little bit about Extol Yeshua Always um, who believes in the Mandela Effect as well or can see changes, definitely can see more changes than most especially in the Bible, just going to go through I'm just going to give you my opinion on some of the so called changes that uh, she did this video here just a few months ago, the end of last year. And uh, yeah, I'll just go through this. And this is what it says as of today. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So straight away, um, a nurse cherisheth her, her children. See, the children would not belong to the nurse. The children would belong to the mother, which I concur with uh, Extol Yeshua always in this verse. What it should read according to the the language here, even as a mother nurseth her children, you see, which I think that she uh, agrees with me in this. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us ye imparted our own souls I mean that's pretty, pretty weird I've got to be honest I mean it doesn't make much sense how can you impart your soul to other believers I mean that's crazy ye are witnesses and God also how holy or maybe it's holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Do you remember this verse, the way that it's said right now? Because it's new to me. And I don't remember Paul saying that he imparted his own soul. <laughs> Do you know what that word is? Holy? I think they meant holy. Yeah. Verse? I mean, why don't they mention, you know, a maid, for that matter? Yeah. Why are they saying a nurse here? You know, finding everything. The of us fl All right, next one. Through death. She can I agrees with me, I Interesting. Think. This one has been changed. No doubt in my mind. What about you? No, I agree. Colossians one twenty two. In the body of his flesh, through death, to pre to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Okay. Do you remember in the body of his flesh through death? Yeah. I don't. I also don't remember the word unreprovable. I remember holy and blameless. Holy and blameless. Mm. But I don't remember the word unreprovable. Do you? I don't know. Mm. Colossians one twenty four. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. All right. well, that's not, oh, I think I need to read that again. That's not Colossians 124. No, who now rejoice? Not huge, I would say. But this one has just been altered. She thinks it's been altered. I'm not sure about this one. Potter, a goodly price, that I was priced at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Does anybody know what priced is? Prized at of them? Prized out of them, yeah. Anyone? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Strange verse. Romans thirteen six. Four four. Yeah. I gotta read it again. Because it's so absurd. I, I just think like by the, the tone of her voice, she's um, so overwhelmed uh, about this Mandela effect, and 
yeah, I mean, I agree with a few of the things that she's saying, but I just, I just feel that the way she's reading it out, it's almost as if she's, uh, you know, looking for mistakes. But I know there's some strange words in there. Goodly Price that I was prized out of them. You know, it's like nah, this. This word is strange. I mean, she, she's right enough in a lot of things, but she should chill out, man. Just relax. <laughs> Romans thirteen six, for for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. And yes, that four four is in my King James Bible. What about you? Do you have four four in your scripture for Romans thirteen six? Yeah, it's been changed clearly. For for this, uh, yeah, strange. And 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 the word tribute there. I would even though I mean it has it has been known to occur, you know. But yeah, I mean, for 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 this cause, pay you tribute also. I mean, yeah. This with you before. I don't recall tribute in it's scripture. Do you huge. know what it means? It's not huge. It means to tax your property, your house, you know your. Yeah, I mean this is like. The Middle East, Europe, two thousand years ago, they did things like that, you know. I mean, land, your house, and even you. Yeah. Did you know a person? It it was called the poll tax back in the nineteen eighties that Margaret Thatcher tried to um, incur on the people of Scotland. You might not have heard of that extol issue always. Yeah, type in poll tax in Scotland, and just see what. <laughs> it's not very pleasant. I don't think anyone. Uh, paid it to be honest in, in Scotland so <laughs> can be taxed think about it that's what it says First Thessalonians 2 7 through 8 ye are witnesses and God also how holy 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 and justly and unblameably <laughs> we behaved ourselves among you that believe <laughs> So being affectionately <laughs> desirous of you, we are willing to have a part against you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. And you know what? I actually remember just reading that to you. So we'll just bypass this. But again, this has been changed. Holy. First Corinthians twelve twenty three, And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable... Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. I must admit that's a little strange, but anyhow. But it's kind of, you can see what it's teaching. There's a teaching on this. Um, as in, the more uh, visible parts of the body should be involved with the... Uh, honouring the the less seen parts of the body within the church. I think this is a very important teaching that, you know, she, she skips by the teaching in a lot of these verses. She's more focused on the words, but you can still get teaching from these verses. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, let me read that again to you. And you ask, tell me, does this bear witness to you? Yeah, it's still does, about people. Say. In the church, First Corinthians twelve twenty three, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, yeah. upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Right. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Well, maybe. <laughs> okay, is anyone else shocked? With this verse? I'm not as shocked as, as you seem to be, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit strange, you know, that the word sec, especially in the second part of the verse, but hey, you know, it's a translation. I mean, I remember words like personal favoritism. I don't know if it was in this verse, but that's the language that I know. About not showing preferential treatment, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's the strangest language ever. The out of my mouth. Spew thee. 
spew. Yeah. And do you know what this word means? Sick. It means to vomit. Sick as a dog. S P E W it should be uh, uh, to be honest I never saw it spelled this way so she might have picked up on something there yes I would agree with this one the spelling of this is very strange I looked it up in Strong's and it's spelled wrong yeah it's been rewritten Titus 2 7 in all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works in yeah, shoeing. I remember like uh, words like that in the old English, like for showing, shoeing, like in the past tense and all of that stuff. So yeah, I kind of remember that words like this. You might think it. Um, some people might not remember. I do remember words like this. Doctrine, shoeing, uncorruptness. Gravity, sincerity. Do you remember that verse? Right, I mean, if shooing is past tense, then it should say in doctrine, showing in corruptness, shouldn't it? It should say showing here. But yeah, I mean, strange. Anyone? Doctrine, uncorruptness, gravity. Those words are so unfamiliar to me in scripture. Okay? Yeah. Well, let's hope you're not a flat earther, extol you sure. I mean, I do believe, you know, gravity. I guess that's interesting. I mean, gravity was only discovered by uh, Isaac Newton, apparently, but it's in the King James Bible. <laughs> maybe, maybe you got a point there. I don't know. Acts 19.35 And when the town clerk had appeased the people. He said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how what that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter. You know, I remember Diana mentioned in scripture in the book of Acts. Absolutely. But now we have a town clerk and we have Jupiter. Yeah, well, I don't remember the town clerk, to be honest with you, but I do remember um, th there's words, words like Mars Hill in the in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul went to preach uh, Jupiter. I, I do remember these words because they, they're they ancient words that go all the way back to Egypt, really. Um, and they're talking about the ancient mystery religion where, where they actually worship the sun, moon, and stars and so on which Israel were caught doing, you know, in, in the book of Jeremiah. Um, I actually hear from Jeremiah 8. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones, bones of the princes, priests, bones of prophets, inhabitants of Jerusalem, out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and the host of heaven, whom they have loved, whom they have served, after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. This is the mystery of religion, which is based in, in Rome now. Uh, they shall not be gathered, nor buried, nor be for dung up, upon the face. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where I have driven them. So this is speaking about a final judgment for those that are in the mystery religions. You know, the Luciferians, basically. I mean, is this the strangest verse? Or one of them? A town clerk? Yeah. Jupiter? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. You know, we yeah. have planets in scripture. That's right. I just showed you gravity. Well, your days... If, in case you haven't noticed, they're named after planets. So, I mean, it's not Torah, but, you know, this is passed down to us. This is paganism, you see. And so the Bible does speak about paganism. You know, like the verse um, of, uh, you know, the king of Judah um, observing Easter. And he did, because he was a pagan king. You know, it says it in the book of Acts. A lot of people think that was an insertion, but it's always been there. Um if if you actually study it, 
you know if you've known scripture if you've studied the bible for a while you'll know these things so i'm not sure how long Stole yeshua has been a christian and studying the bible but a lot of these things have been there for you know since it's been written basically we have um mars in scripture that's right we even have a shuttle in scripture shuttle i'm not sure about that one. all types of really crazy stuff in scripture these days all with different agendas Matthew 525 agree with thine adversary quickly I remember this one whilst thou art in the way with him I remember lest this that one. Any, yeah you'll be delivered to the judge I remember James 515 so it's a bit shocking but but in these days basically which is still like today but um, they you know places like Sodom and Gomorrah they, they did terrible things to people so the the days are kind of getting like that so it's showing a type of wisdom in a situation uh, there's probably um, well, you, you'd obviously you'd have to look at this and look at sermons about this to see the hidden wisdom um, within this but I do remember it saying that Yeshua talking about that James 5.15 and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven of him. They shall be forgiven him. Do you remember that verse? Well, certainly, it, sh it you know, it should say heal the sick, right? And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, perhaps, save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins he shall be forgiven him that's interesting I suppose it's uh, that's a theological verse very much you know would the Lord uh, also forgive the sins of a person whom a prayer of faith is uh, praying for the sick and when, <laughs> and when that person's you know healed their sore ankle or whatever it is then they get they got all their sins forgiven them. I don't know. Um, it's interesting. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord. And I'll be honest. I've I've prayed prayers of faith to save um, <clears throat> friends and family members who have been. I suppose the ones who have been, uh, especially friends who have been really sort of desperately into sin and I've, and I've really prayed for them and, and the Lord's really listened to them so the Lord responds according to the faith faith in him, that's how the Lord responds, so I think there's still a lot of teaching within this verse that we can ha that, that we can uh, ascertain shall raise him up <clears throat> and if you have committed sins they shall be forgiven to him oh dear no my prayer for a sick person as a born again Christian will not save anyone. Not at all. I well, I mean, do you believe once saved, always saved? I, you know, I do believe if you intercede for people, um, then they, they will initially get saved. Now, it's up to them if they want to keep their salvation according to faith in the Lord. If they keep having faith, then they're saved, those who endure to the end, you see. So the initial prayers, I think, um, are saints praying for other people according to the Lord's will. So I, I think this is okay. You know, I don't think it's teaching anything weird. But then again. Absolutely not. Only Jesus saves. Okay? This is something different. But it'd be interesting, you know, that a lot of Christians, I believe, don't um, pray for a lot of people to get saved. But let's say, for example, you maybe dedicate a week, put people on a prayer list, and uh, try and remember it's not the amount of prayers that you say, but if you say one faith prayer, the Lord will hear that out of, you know, a hundred prayers you might say in a week. If you say one faith prayer to the Lord, be moved by faith, you see, so a lot, a lot of the prophets, you know, they uh, they didn't take oaths of um, 
and sometimes they did take oaths of chastity, sometimes they never spoke words for years, certain of the patriarchs and prophets. And all that's a sort of a build up into one prayer that they might say with faith before the Lord, you see, and then the Lord might hear that faith prayer. But you know, Jesus came and spoke against those who, who pray repetitious prayers. You know, they're praying all the time in the synagogue, in the marketplaces, they're praying for, you know, weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, you name it. And uh, a lot of these prayers are not heard by the Lord. Why? Because they're not faith prayers, you see. So th I think it's a very important verse, but hey, what do I know? Sounds very Catholic to me. Mormon. Definitely not what I know to be true. I can't pray for anybody. You can. For them to be saved. Yes, you I can. can pray that God would have mercy. You can. You can pray. Well, I see if you're praying for God to have mercy on someone, isn't that what the what the next part of the verse is saying? If they've committed sin, they shall be forgiven. So you just just like believe in the word of God. I mean, so yeah, I mean, even though I know the Mandela effect is real, I know verses and words are being changed. I understand that. I'm not sure if she emphasizes the different Bible versions. I think that this is the King James Bible that she's quoting from here, the authorized version. But, you know, she's not been very clear in this. In other videos that she's made, um, she's not been deliberate enough in showing people the differences between the King James, you know, the Nestle's text, the text is receptive she's not been very clear in that and to be honest women are not appointed to teach or have authority over a man right so uh, you know I'm not sure you know where she is in her life if she's married all that stuff but there's, there seems to be just some personal things coming through when she's reading this that um, that I think is, is, is sort of rubbing off on other other people like this woman here this tattooed lady Wendy Mitchell God bless her but you know she, um, she's really gathered quite a few um, people who are making videos about her you see I'm not sure why but mercy upon them I can pray that their hearts would be softened to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior but my prayer cannot save anyone. Can't forgive them of their sins. Only God can do that. Well, I mean, Jesus says those whom you forgive shall be forgiven. You see? And we're, we're meant to show God's mercy as God shows mercy. Uh, and if people are not showing the correct, um, humble, repentant spirit before God, we're meant to also reflect that. Um, for certain people as well like you can turn around to a Catholic priest and say your sins haven't been forgiven you, you, you you're you not absolved from your sin you know, just walk into a Catholic church no I'm sorry you're not forgiven <laughs> and they're walking around with the incense and in, uh, in their little confessionals telling people that they're forgiven you can just walk right in there if, if you're in the UK ask if they got a Dewey Rams Bible take them to the police station because the Dewey Rams is still banned in the United Kingdom, right? It's still contraband. So if you actually got one of them in the Catholic Church, you can take them, take them to jail, basically. If we're going by the law, that is, you know. But then again, not a lot of people believe the law is still in effect. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Yeah, that that's a mind bender right there. Crazy. Romans eleven twenty six, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You know, I did a video showing how we're seeing the names of cities changed. So Zion has become Sion in certain instances in scripture. Yeah, well, the, the King James Bible is known for this. It changes the name 
Eli Eliseus, you know, from Elijah should be to Eliseus, and then you know, Yohanan uh, changes uh, changes Yeshua to Jesus, changes Zion to Sion. You see, so the King James Bible is the translators were known for this. This is probably the most controversial part of the King James Bible. I think it's nine or ten times. And I talked to you about Jacob. Okay, now Jacob, as we know, is um, oh, I always said important Jacob. in Scripture. Come Abraham, on. Isaac, and Jacob. I always said right? Jacob. Leviticus sixteen twenty one. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat. Okay, this is talking about uh, the Day of Atonement, which is going to be in two days' time. So the Day of Atonement is going to be in two days' time. So this is uh, a verse which uh, is very seasonal, preaching in and out of season. And this was the goat that all the, the sins were laid upon, the live goat, and it was driven off a cliff. And then the other goat was sacrificed uh, on the altar, you see. And so again, shadow pictures of... Um, what Jesus did uh, I do remember it saying this everyone extol Yeshua always everyone remembers this verse that you know the, the high priest lays his he head hands upon the head of the live goat everyone remembers this and um, confesses the iniquities of the children of Israel okay that's everyone knows this one but apparently extol Yeshua always has never heard of this verse I mean come on this is basic, uh, you know, Judeo-Christian verses here that you should be aware of, you know? And confess over him all the iniquities yeah, of right. the children of Israel and all shocking. their transgressions you know, shocking, but it's true. in all their sins, putting them yeah. and putting them upon the head of the goat. Do you remember that? Yep. Does that sound familiar to you? Let me know. Susie, so, I'm... Um, just going to stop the video there, but as you can see, it's a real mixed bag um, with the Extol Yeshua always. Now, if you're seeing changes in the Mandela effect, you know, that's fine, but please don't follow a man or a woman because, you know, they bring a lot of their ignorance into, into their videos and stuff like that, which is dangerous, which can turn people against, um, you know, certain things and situations and you know fellow Mandela effectees if, if I may call <laughs> if I may call us that uh, not that I feel affected in any way to be honest I just you know I just stick with the truth but uh, hope this has been a blessing and uh, you know I hope I haven't been too cheeky to extol your shoe always because I know she's got a lot of haters which I'm not a hater not at all but just trying to highlight some of the, the reasons maybe some people are making hateful videos against Extol Yeshua always and sort of harassing her, you know, because she does show a lot of ignorance in quite a few of her videos, but she makes some great points as well. So uh, that's why she's probably got, you know, such a, a controversy surrounding her channel. But God bless her, pray for her, and for all our salvation as the Bible says all of Israel shall be saved and as Jesus said I came for the the lost sheep of the house of Israel hallelujah God bless you thank you for listening